Learn all about living in Guanajuato, Mexico from Willis Martin in this video interview with expats in Mexico. So what, what prompted you to move to Mexico? What, what, what was the decision process there? Well, first of all, I had, I had some friends in, in Sonora and we'd go see them all the time. And, and I always liked Mexico and I, I wanted to live somewhere in Latin America. So many of our vacations were to other countries on a vacation 30 years ago, we passed, we went to San Miguel. That was all right. Uh, on the way back to the airport in Guadalajara, we had breakfast in Guanajuato, and I was fascinated. I spent four years looking for a house, coming down on vacations, long weekends, and um, and this and the idea was that you were going to retire there, and you wanted a house, so you were looking for I a wanted house. a house. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And we had been down here enough, and kind of knew the lay of the land, and had met some friends and. That sort of thing that I felt comfortable buying a house. So why, why Guanajuato? It's an urban planning, urban planner's uh, dream. I mean, it's a very walkable town, the old part. Uh, very restricted cars. Um, very, very Italian feeling. Uh, it, it's it just got a super. There's no straight streets. There's no huge open areas. Um, a lot of the streets downtown are blocked off for pedestrians only, and the morning trucks come down and deliver stuff, and then they're gone. Um, very, very different. The second thing was, because I do speak Spanish, I did not want to be in an area with a lot of Americans. I wanted to use my Spanish. What's the weather like? Right, right now, we hit maybe 17 a day and, and low 40s at night. Um the houses, of course, have no air conditioning. You don't need it. And they have no uh, heating. So houses are different here. Our house, I have to wear a jacket in the house, but I go outside, I take my jacket off. This time of year, because they're all blocked, they, they get quite cool. Um, so I have an electric blanket. Thing. So January gets a little cool, but uh, yeah. kind of like California during the um, during the winter. Yeah. It doesn't get People that hot during the summer either, does it? Oh, we might hit 90 twice. Oh, okay. So it's um, really not, you're not talking about 100 degree weather. Oh, good grief. No, no, yeah. no, no. So it, it sounds is, like it really is, an it, ideal spring-like climate there. It, I love Tell it. Tell us about um, your house, Willis. I have a uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath house, not real big, um, probably 1,800 square feet. But I added a staircase to the roof. And of course, it's a flat roof, and we probably we have a garden up there, and with probably four to five hundred plants. Where is your uh, house located within the city? Is it up on the hill? No, we're not up on the on the panoramic. There is a they call it a panoramic highway that goes kind of circles the valley here. That's a long way up. We're we're in Pastitas, which is right by the baseball diamond. We're twelve minutes from from the central part of town, which is called the Garden or the Jardin. We have a lot of friends that rent and then they like to be up on the on the panoramic because i mean you have some views that are i mean they are million dollar views but it's a million dollar climb to get down and go back up you mentioned a little uh about the water earlier is there a, uh, a problem in Guanajuato with drinking the water no you don't drink the water everybody uses bottled water or you can buy filter systems to put on but most people buy bottled water i see it's a, it's a it's called a garrafon, and it's 20 liters. They're about 30 pesos for 20 liters of water, which would be, what, five gallons? Mm -hmm. You mentioned that some of your friends are uh, renting there. Uh, what, are, are the rents pretty reasonable there? Yeah, they are. The east part of town here is probably the best. The west is a little more dicey. Um, it just depends what you want. You want a view. You want to be close to downtown. <laughs> Give me an example, if you would, uh, of what a thousand dollars would buy you with uh, rent. I a pretty nice, you know, a real nice, probably a furnished, a furnished place uh, for two people. Um, uh, walkable to downtown usually. And looking for a place. One of the things in the commentary is noise. Um, there's a church right around the corner here, uh, San Sebastian, and I think that's the saints day here soon because they'll close the street and we'll have a street fair. 
but the fireworks go off 24-7 when, when it's that. I mean, just boom bitty boom We are a university town, and the main part of the University of Guanajuato is here, and there's 6,000 students. There's absolutely no dormitories for them. So they a lot of people rent out bedrooms, uh, porches, anything they can to students. And as a reminder, when I was in school, students can be pretty noisy. So that's why I would rent and find out if you're in a student area because they're all over. They're actually the sick. other thing is dogs. Everybody has a dog. Uh -huh. Everybody puts a dog on the roof for their security. <laughs> um so they, you know, they're not very well taken care of, and they bark. So, so if someone is looking for a a quieter place to live, where, where would you recommend? Well, I would recommend renting and just kind of studying the neighborhood in the central part of town. Probably seventy percent of the access to homes is on callejones. Callejones are walkable streets. It's fun to walk. I wouldn't do it at night, but it's fun to walk. So there's tons of callejones. So some of them are as narrow as you can't even put your arms out and you can touch both walls. Some of them are wider. Some of them go up and down the mountains. They go all over the place. And they're famous for it. Now you're on a street where you you haven't got any distance. You don't have the traffic, but you got people, noise, dogs, and students is really amplified in callejones. Callejones are fun, but they're different. Uh, and if you were moving here and gonna bring a lot of furniture, I mean, there are people that'll carry it up the hill for you and they don't charge a whole heck of a lot, but Most you gotta carry you gotta carry your groceries if you go to the store, which are you know, supermarkets here. Anything has to be carried back up and down those hills. And so yeah, for athletic people, we'll definitely recommend. Oh Guanajuato. yeah, so, I mean, it, there's a lot of elevation now. Even taking a taxi, what you can do is take a taxi to the top of, because all these callejones go up, go up and up and up, usually to the panoramic highway. So you could take a cab up to the top and walk down, but it's it's just a thought, and they're they're, they're romantic, and there's a lot of smaller ones, and um, but they can be noisy too, and it's just carrying groceries and that sort of thing. I'm not saying that. You shouldn't, but rent and 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 start exploring. As a uh, uh, as a large university town, there must be uh, actually lots of things to do. Oh, there's great nightlife. Um, they, they've got their own orchestra. We have the Teatro Juarez, the Juarez Theater, which is um, the dictator built 107 years ago. I think it's now been a lot of events there. Beautiful, beautiful acoustics. Um, there's probably three or four events there every week. And there's auditoriums all over town because we have the Serpentine, the uh, Serpentine Festival, which is three weeks in October, where it's an international event where they invite one state, uh, it's the United States of Mexico, one of the states, and then a country. This past fall, it was Jalisco, which is Guadalajara, and it was Spain. And so they had a lot of music from Jalisco and a lot of music from Spain, and probably during the three weeks, probably 300 events. Isn't that one, town, of the, one of the largest international music festivals in Latin America? Right, yeah. A lot of the weekends we get out. <laughs> the town just packs. It's, so even though you do a lot of walking, you still have an automobile? I have an automobile, and I have a small one. I have a little old uh, Chevrolet HH. HHR, they don't make them anymore. Um, and it goes through the hills here just fine. I watch people with a big Suburban or something, and mm -hmm. you come to some corners, they've got to do a double backup and go around. Mm -hmm. but, what's, but, the, uh, what's the cost of living like there, Willis? Well, I just paid my property tax. My house, I paid fifteen, uh, 115000 for my house. Uh, that's nine years ago, so there's got to be some inflation. I'm close to downtown. Um, that included adding the stairway to the roof and all those sort of things. I just paid my property taxes and they were $55 for the year. Can't beat that. No, can't beat that. Now, services, yeah. I, there's a trash bin down the street where you take your trash. Um, police, if I needed the police, I, I guess I'd call in case of emergency. There's ambulance service. Um, they sweep the street. I'm in an area where they do sweep the streets and that sort of thing with brooms. 
Um, but the property taxes are great. Um, water is probably the most expensive. Monthly water bill is probably, I'm converting at 20 to the dollar, is probably $8. Plus the bottled water would probably be another $10. The electricity, the electricity is billed every two months. It's the National Electrical Company, CEFA, CEF, CEF. Um, I pay, let's see, I paid 140 I paid $7 for two months. Now, I turn stuff off and I don't have a TV. I have gas. I've got a tank on the roof because I'm accessible because I live on a street. The gas, our gas is delivered in a big, in a, in a truck. He comes across the little bridge, tank goes up to the roof. Um, is about 2,000 pesos four times a year, which is 500 bucks three to four times a year to fill up the tank. I have uh, a dryer, which I don't use completely, but because I hang my stuff out on the roof. I have two gas hot water heaters and a gas stove. So some people have propane heaters in their houses or they use electrical heaters, both of which are, are fairly expensive. Um, I buy an electric blanket and wear a sweater. Very, Cost of living. Very, very minimal. It, it, very, very minimal. Very, very minimal. If we eat out a lot, we probably eat out four times, five times a week. Uh, we, we went out for breakfast this morning. We'll probably go back down seven for a beer and, and some tacos. Um, one of the fancier restaurants in town that overlooks the Hardeen, and we eat there probably once a week. Um, in dollars, including a couple of drinks, and I like ice cream, and that is probably... Twenty-seven dollars, including the tip, for the two of you. He's for the two of us. And the and the grocery store, you know, like your weekly grocery bill. What would that be? Well, we we we're close to Lyon, and Lyon there's a there's a Costco. So we go to Costco probably every three weeks or four weeks. We buy for ourselves, and then the 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 two families that we have here both have two children each, and the parents. Uh, we buy a lot of stuff from them, and they divide it up because it's so much cheaper to, to buy in bulk. And mm. so um, we, I use my credit card there. Yesterday the bill was 7,000 pesos at 20 to the buck, 320 bucks. There's little grocery stores all around us. Um, we go down to a little vegetable store. There's probably six vegetable stores on our block. Um, so you can go down and get fruit and vegetables and that sort of thing. There's probably four bakeries. So if you want a donut in the morning, you're going to get a hot donut or hot bread at night or whatever you want. Everything's right here. If uh, you want to go to the United States or travel, where uh, do you go to Leon or? Yeah, the, the airport's the aer is halfway between here and Leon. So we're 20. If if the highway's open and there's not a crash or something, is 20 minutes to Leon. And that and that and that's called Leon. It's called the Guanajuato Airport. And they fly all over the place. I mean, you go to Mexico City and off in the, anywhere you want to go. A uh, lot of direct flights from the States now. A lot of the cut rate Amer uh, Mexican Airlines. There's two or three flights a week from Chicago directly into Leon or Guanajuato. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really gotten big. And if you're driving so you to... Uh, real, real, you, you can get, that's the same airport that most of the people in, in San Miguel use and they're an hour and a half because they got to drive over the hill here come to guanajuato and then go on to the airport so we're much closer to the airport than than san miguel uh in terms of driving how long does it take to get to say guadalajara guadalajara in two and a half hours so you're fairly close very very close uh -huh. it's all tollways i mean right. uh, you pay some tolls and away you go so yeah right. i mean puerto Vallarta is six and a half hours are your friends mainly uh, uh, the local Mexican people, or do you have yes, some expat yeah. friends also? Yeah, we have some expat friends, too, that are married. One of them is married to um, a Mexican, uh -huh. uh, Mexican and with, with kids. Right. Um, but most most is with the family, and, and most are some neighbors, and and a lot of people downtown are, are, are have stores, and we go out to dinner with them a lot, so mainly with Mexicans. Uh, there is a group in town here that meets every 
every every Sunday for breakfast of, of expats. And I went when I was not married to her, and, and, and it was fine. But it's, it's made for Americans to chat and do their sort of thing. And since my wife speaks no no English, it, you know, I've drifted away from that. But uh-huh. I still see some of those people in the street, and we stop and talk, and, and I'll translate for my wife, or they'll they'll speak enough Spanish. And, and so we still see a lot. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to move to Guanajuato? I, I would say rent first. Just come down and see it. Or, or come down and sp- spend a week and just just enjoy and explore. I mean, you, you, you'll be able to get a sense pretty good. Sounds like you have a great life, Willis Martin. Thank you so oh, much for I, spending the time with us at Expats in Mexico today. Well, it's my pleasure. I am the happiest gringo on the earth. Okay. Thanks. You betcha.